G'day everyone, Jamie Chapman here for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. In this video, we're going to be having a look at a section of the heart. And this is really quite an amazing section. I love this section actually um, because it's a junction between the, the atrium, the ventricle here, and then we've got an atrioventricular valve with its attached papillary muscle and chordae tendinae. I'll sort of jump the cue there. So we'll, we'll have a look at these features uh, in our three minutes. So let's start our timer. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, this is a junction between the atrium uh, superiorly and then the ventricle inferiorly. And you can certainly see one of the major differences between uh, the atria and the ventricles. Of course, that's the size of the chamber. So the atrium has a much smaller uh, size to its wall and then the ventricle, obviously very thick muscular wall, particularly here. So the heart's made up of uh, three layers. It's made up of an epicardium, which is this sort of tissue here. Normally there's a simple squamous lining on the surface. Uh, often that gets removed when we process for microscopy. And so this is the epicardium. Then we have the myocardium, which of course is predominantly made up of cardiomyocytes. And then we have the endocardium, which is the internal lining, which consists of a simple squamous lining and then connective tissue. Now, if we have a look at just sort of a little comparison between the atrium and the ventricle, one of the major features which you can see as a difference, of course, other than the thickness of the myocardium, is the amount of connective tissue in the endocardium. Very thick endocardial tissue here. You can see all this connective tissue. Uh, there's a simple squamous lining here. If we go down to, oh, we can probably just squeeze down here, go down to the ventricle, you can see in comparison, um, there's a very sh thin layer of endocardium and then most of this layer is made up of this myocardium. So if we sort of zoom back out here, um, here we have um, uh, the myocardium. If we have a quick look at the myocytes here, the cardiomyocytes, uh, can we can see them in cross section here centrally located nuclei and we can see the cardiomyocytes are relatively small. Uh, when we actually have a look at the um, uh, the ventricular cardiomyocytes, they're much larger. Uh, obviously, most of these are uh, obliquely sectioned here. Uh, if we were to have a look at some of these in uh, longitudinal section, of course, we'd see striations typical of, of cardiac muscle. And I think if we sort of zoom out to the, the periphery here, we can actually see some of these in cross section a little bit better. Um, so you can see that they're a bit uh, larger cells. Obviously, they've got to contract further, create greater pressures to be able to move the blood um, through the body, uh, whereas the, the atria only need to move the blood down to the ventricles. Um, so here, again, as we mentioned, this is the atrioventricular valve. Um, you can kind of think of it as an um, endocardial sandwich with an endocardium on this side, endocardium on the ventricular side, and then in between we've got the connective tissue, which forms uh, an extension of the fibrous skeleton of the heart. Here we can actually see one of the attachments of the chordae tendinae, and then it ends in this papillary muscle, which is, of course, made up of cardiac muscle tissue. So these are the cardiomyocytes. You can see the nice branching, very typical of... Uh, cardiac muscle cell centrally located nuclei. Well, that's pretty much an overview of this section here. I think it's quite a quite a lovely section, um, and I hope you found that useful. Huru.